Good afternoon, church. I am honored and privileged to introduce the second preacher of the day, my son, Denzel Dulce. Denzel was born on April 13, 2010. He is in the seventh grade and is very bright. Denzel is part of the Pathfinder Club, the Audio Visual Ministry, and the Children's Choir at Plantation. Denzel is an honor roll student and part of the National Honor Society. He participates in chess, volleyball, soccer, track, and the Christian club in school. Denzel is fearless, adventurous, and loves to try new things. He is determined to always give his very best in everything that he does, even if it doesn't work out. He doesn't get discouraged, and he does his best in everything. His favorite thing to do is to hang out with family, swimming, and playing video games. Denzel's favorite psalm is Psalm 23. When Denzel grows up, he wants to be a surgeon, and he prays that he's a representation of God in all that he does. We are very proud of him, and welcome Denzel. Hello? Okay. Good morning. I meant good afternoon, church. <laughs> My name is Denzel Dulce. I'm 12 years old. I'm in seventh grade. I'm the oldest of six, and I'm the leader of the Dulce crew. <laughs> um, I didn't mention this before, but I have two aunties and my mom who are married to D Harmony. I won't, I won't reveal their, I won't reveal their names. Claude, Edzer, Denzel, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's pretty hard having six, it's pretty hard having six siblings. Two of them are babies, hard. A sister, hard. Nathan, hard. And when you have a sixth grader's cousin that walks around with you everywhere at school going, Denzel, look at this. Denzel, look at that. Denzel, look over there. Denzel, want to eat lunch together? Denzel, Denzel, Denzel. Her name's Nayeli. <laughs> but let's get started with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, that was too close. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for protecting your children throughout the week. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence today. Thank you for allowing me to come speak about you and to spread the word about you to other people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm honored that the children's department allowed me to come speak today. When I first heard that I was preaching, I, I, I got pretty hesitant. I got cold feet. But I decided to do it because my mom said, you got this, and that... We're all family here. It's not like I had a choice or anything, but the topic of today's sermon is God's love for us. Our scripture today is found in chapter 139, verse 13 to 14 in Psalms. I'll be using the New International Version. You can open your Bibles or you can follow on the screen. The verse says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Remember that part. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Now, let's backtrack in time to around Adam and Eve. I'm pretty sure if I was on the, the first person on this place called Earth, I would be amazed by everything I see, like the universe, the clouds, the blue sky, the ocean, elephants, zebras, turtles, wolves, cheetahs, cats, dogs, I'm pretty sure you get my point. God just created. I would be so amazed and fascinated, wouldn't you? Especially when you look at yourself. This is an indication that this is an indication that we're unique, that we're special. Wouldn't you think that that's great about you? That 
but personally, I would feel special. I brought this up because I believe that Adam brought, that Adam thought he was special too, and he passed it down from generation to generation to generation to generation, and here we are now. My parents have always told me and my sister and all my other siblings that we are special because we're God's children. There are certain places, certain foods, certain clothing, certain people, certain companies we can't have for Christians. We are of the world but cannot be like the world. Anybody in middle school would know this. It's pretty easy to get caught up in the trends of TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and want to be like the cool kids. But it's, it's important to remember that God specially designed me to become a leader and not a follower. That God had a plan for me when, he, when I was in my mother's womb. And that I, was created to come, that I was created to come spread the word about to other people so then they could talk about God's love for them too. Now, let's take a moment to go a little into the future, around David's time. Let's go to 1 Samuel verse 17, 30 to, I meant 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 31 to 37, New International Version. It says, what David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul said for him. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of the Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Here, we see that everybody on the field probably thinks he's going to get stomped on. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and killed it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. If it tried to turn on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion, the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of a lion and the paw of a bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. I'm sure he did not feel special after he wasn't allowed to go fight in the battle that he killed the giant in because he was small and a shepherd, and probably too young. But I'm pretty sure that God gave him the courage to go ahead and at least try to take on Goliath. So some people or children out there may not know some, a single word I just said, so I'll do it simpler. My right, your left, will be King Saul, and I meant David, and my right, I meant left, your right, will be King King Saul. So, can I um go fight the giant? You know, the the giant, the big one. <laughs> oh, oh wait, you're serious. No. Do you have a death wish? No, you can't. You're too small. He, he, you're too small. You're like 3'3". Three, three. He's 10 foot. He's taller than an NBA player. He's just going to tackle you and you're done. Please. Please. I beg. I can beat him. I know that for sure. I've beaten lions and bears that try to take my sheep and then I killed it. I'm pretty sure I could beat this kind of taller person. Hmm, well, let's look here. No one else signed up for the job. The staff is quitting. Um, I guess, yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, the Lord be with you, by the way. Okay. Thank you. And then, I'm pretty sure we all know what happens next. David goes to the river, gets some stones, smooths it out, then goes fight the giant. The giant tries to hit him, and then David becomes a pro pitcher, 
like it's baseball or something. <laughs> right in the forehead. They say that you don't feel sense until it slaps you right in the face. And I'm pretty sure they literally meant it in this story. Just like in the story, David says he protects his sheep. Right now, we are, sheep, we are the sheep and God is the shepherd. He's protecting us from all evil. There's a lot of things going on in the world right now. COVID, monkeypox, a hurricane just came by. It's very easy to get kind of scared when you're going out the door, hoping that you come home. But all we, all we gotta do is just pray. God left the 99 to go get that one sheep, like a good shepherd, unlike a bad shepherd who would think, <laughs> one sheep, that's funny. That's only one sheep, I have 99 more. They're all the same color, all the same type of sheep, so I, I don't care. True. God loves all his children and wants to save us all because we're all special in God's eyes. You may ask, but Denzel, how does this apply to us? Well, the devil wants to convince us that we are not special in any way. He wants to take us over physically and mentally. One way he can take us over is finding our insecurities. An insecurity in simplest form is a lack of confidence. Some of your insecurities can be your looks, if you're smart or not, if you have the latest electronics, if you have a lot of followers on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and the list goes on. You get my point. The devil doesn't want us to be great. He wants us to doubt God's love for us. But I'm sure we all know that we're special in some way. I mean, I didn't think I was special. If you met me for the first time, if you're a child and you met me for the first time, you'd think I'm weird. You'd think that I'm energetic. You'd think that I'm like a college student. Energetic? Weird, not cool, and runs on caffeine. <laughs> Even if we do something wrong or make poor decisions, God is there with us and is ready to wrap his loving arms around us. When no, God still loves us even in our darkest hour. When no one is there, God is there with us. When we're going through hard times, God is there with us. When, when we need someone or at least just a friend, God is there with us ready to be our friend. If we need someone to talk to when our parents don't listen to us, if they don't understand what we're going through, God is there with you. Even through the darkest times, God is there with you. I pray that God, love, God wraps his love all around you guys and that your life reflects God's love. That your life and your life and your life and your life and your life, all of your lives reflect God's love for us. Let me just say that one more time. I hope that God's love wraps all around you, that your life and your life and your life and your life reflects God's love to others. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in your light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. You high and lifted up, Shining in your light of your glory. Pour out your power and love 
as we sing holy 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 i surrender ah i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender to see you holy 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 i want to see you i want to see you i want to see Can we just get one more round of applause just for that? <laughs> Raise your hand if you were blessed by this today. I don't see a lot of people. I mean, come on, guys. An a nine-year-old boy just preached. He preached. He memorized the whole sermon. He's been working so hard on it. He memorized the whole thing, and you just seen him preach. Come on. If you would want to come up and pray with me, go ahead and be my guest. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day you have given us. Thank you for blessing us throughout the week. Thank you for guiding us here today. Thank you for the children's ministry, helping us all through that, giving us encouragement, and helping us practice for like a whole month. Thank you for blessing us. Please make sure that when the people get home, they know that they were blessed by God's children. Please guide us, protect us, and forgive us for all our sins. In Jesus' name I pray.